His mercies are new every morning. Great is His faithfulness. Wow. That's crazy. That's pretty crazy. Well, happy Mother's Day to you. And yeah, yeah. And listen, we want to be, I want you to understand something from our heart here. Moms, we really appreciate you. Ladies, we really appreciate, appreciate you because we understand that there's some, there's some ladies that Mother's Day is a painful day for. You know? Some of you have tried to have babies and you couldn't. Some of you have lost children. So Mother's Day is a tough day for you. And I want you to know we understand that. And we're just as grateful and thankful for you. And if you've, if you've never had a baby, don't want a baby. We're thankful for you too. <laughs> In fact, you might be the smartest one of us all. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. You know, but seriously, just uh, just know. I started to say something really stupid, like without mothers we wouldn't be here. So I'm not even going to say that. I started to say that, but I'm not. So, <clears throat> ladies, I hope that somebody treats you well for lunch, and you didn't have to cook it. Okay, so that'll be that'll be good. Well, we're in our series called Seven, uh, unleashing our core values here, and. Like we've said, you know, we want you to understand exactly what core values are and why we have them, okay? Um, the core values are, are the beliefs and the convictions. Um, the, they're the things that, that drive us and guide us and direct all our actions, and they, they give support to, to our purpose and our vision for being here. And let me give you an example, okay? When I put my sunglasses on, Okay? Everything in this room just became, these driving glasses came kind of rose colored, okay? So everything I see is filtered through these glasses, right? All of you are filtered. Y'all just look so pretty. All y'all got tans all of a sudden. <laughs> Corey had, had one before. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you look even, you look, you just all bright down there, Corey. But uh, you see what I'm saying? These sun, core values are just like this right here. Okay, it's, it's what we filter everything through that helps us make decisions and stay on God's purpose for Outbreak Church. Okay, now also too, and this, this is just up to you, you can smoke on this when you get home. If you don't have personal core values, then how do you know if, how do you know if you're, how do you know what you're doing in life? How do you know what drives you? How do you know what to say yes to, no to? You need to think of some personal core values, too. So our values, whether it's a, a corporation, a church, or a person, or a family, um, they define who we are. So at Outbreak Church, our core values are gospel truth. And that is the reason we say gospel truth is because, and we say this every week, folks, truth now has become totally uh, relative Truth is not, there, there's, the world will tell you there's not one truth. The world will tell you that truth changes from place to place, and it's, that's okay. That's what the world tells you. God says, no, truth is the same for all people, all places, and all times, and truth is based on who God is because God is truth and His Word is true. So that's, what we've, that's, that's the foundation. And some people don't like that because they don't like what God's Word has to say. Well, you take it up with God. He wrote it. You take it up with Him. Okay? But it's in the book, and we're going to abide by the book. Okay? We're going to abide by the book. So, gospel truth, compassion, restoration. We spent a couple of weeks on that, and today we're looking at faithfulness. We're going to unpack the fourth value of faithfulness. And here's the, well, first of all, how many of you did your homework from last week? Anybody remember? All right. Oh, only one person. Corey, you get an A plus today. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right, well, last week I said just be looking around you for examples of faithfulness during the week. Anybody, did anybody see one? Seriously, anybody see some examples of faithfulness? Uh, Jim did. All right. All right. Anybody? Okay. Well, just, just first of all, and this is not a cheap, this is not a, a cheap shot here. But if you just look at your wife or your mother, you'll see the perfect example of faithfulness. 
Because they're the ones that are they're the ones that are always there. They're the ones changing the diapers. They're the ones feeding us, and they're the ones doing all this. They're the I know for me, they're the ones cleaning up my mess. You know, and I don't mean like spill tea. I mean like them big messes I make, like you know, life coming apart kind of messes. You know, so mothers are that pr classic example of faithfulness. Okay, um, what a, and, and just some other other faithful f examples of faithfulness and I'm just going to be real honest with you if you look around this room if you look at this building you're looking at an example of God's faithfulness you realize God God promised us and I'm going to use that word specifically God promised us this building before there was even an outbreak church and in his time and his faithfulness and in the most miraculous way possible he blessed us with it you know so we trusted God's faithfulness. We didn't jump ahead of God's faithfulness. We didn't do any of that kind of stuff. We just stayed, we said, God, you're faithful. You promise it, we'll trust you. Okay? So, faithfulness. I, I found something interesting this week that was kind of a, I should have known this. I don't know why it was sort of a, uh, hurt my heart a little bit. But let's look at the, the dictionary definition of faithful, which is the adjective version of faithfulness. Let's look at this. First of all, Faithful means strict or thorough in performance of duty. Okay? Uh, secondly, true to one's word, promises, and vows. Three, steady in allegiance or affection, loyal and constant. Okay? All right? Um, number four, reliable, trusted, or believed. Number five, adhering or true to fact, a standard or an original, accurate. Now this is the one that threw me off. I looked in four, I looked in a bunch of different dictionaries, but four of the dictionaries I looked in, look what it says here by, by that last one. It says obsolete. That's what the dictionary says about full of faith believing. Guys, what have, where have we become to? When you can say a dog is faithful, but the dictionary says there's no such thing as a Christian being faithful. I'm just telling you. I was, I was totally blown away by that. Totally blown away by that. That even in our dictionaries, our, the faith of, of, of people like you and I even the dictionary says we are obsolete. We're going to talk about more of that more next week when we talk about relevance. But that ought to just, that ought to light your fire right there. I don't mean calling the dictionary people and blowing them up. I mean, you know, that means proving them wrong by the way you live. Okay? So, and as you know, as we've talked through this thing, each of our core values has a, a paragraph to explain it. So let's read this together. All right? Faithfulness. We are committed by the power of the Holy Spirit to trust in God's faithfulness and to embody steadfast love and mercy as children of God in our daily interactions. We will rely on God's loyalty and consistency in being true to His character and His Word. That's what we want to do. Okay, now remember as we talk about this, guys, you, we can't do these things on our own. It's got to be by the power of the Holy Spirit that enables us to do this, okay? So, in, in the Bible, faithful means, and I looked this up in the Bible Dictionary, steadfast, dedicated, dependable, and worthy of trust. So, obviously the first thing we need to talk about is that faithfulness is a characteristic of God. Faithfulness is part of who God is, okay? You know, God doesn't have like, you can't say, well, God has beautiful blue eyes. We don't know that, you know, but you can say God is amazingly faithful, and that's who He is. That's who he is. It's part of who he is. So God is not, God, listen, God is true not only because he says I am the one true God as opposed to all the other things that we try to worship, okay? But also he's, he's constant or faithful in keeping his promises and so he's worthy of trust. Now, I don't, I don't want to see hands raised, but how many of you have ever had a promise broken? Probably 100%. You know, how many of you have ever broken a promise? Oops, <laughs> probably 100%. We kind of like that other one better, though, you know. Uh, guys, people, people are going to fail you. People are going to break their promises because we're people, okay? 
Here's what you have to understand, and you've, we, we just got to soak this in. God cannot, notice I said cannot, break his promises. God cannot. So when you see the promises of God in your scriptures, guys, that is a straight up unbreakable promise from the creator of the universe. Amen. He cannot break his promises. Okay? So God is perfect in, 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 in loyalty and consistency. He's perfect in being true to his name and, and being true to his character and his word. That's who God is. God cannot break his promises. And, and as people, you know, the, the faithful person is, is several things. We're steadfast. In other words, we're, we're, we're hung in there. We're unchanging. And we are thoroughly grounded in relationship to each other. And this kind of faithfulness that we're talking about is found in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And it's used to describe, first of all, in both Testaments, God's relation to the world. Okay? God is faithful to you and I. God is faithful to his creation. God is faithful. Okay? God is faithful. And, and please do me a favor. You're going to hear the word faithful a whole lot today. Don't think of old yeller. Okay? Some of you who are old enough like me to remember the old Disney movie, Old Yeller, what a precious, faithful dog. And I still want to cry about the end of the movie. If you hadn't seen Old Yeller, you need to go get it or get it on Netflix or something. Just get you some tissues toward the end. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Spoiler alert. But that dog was faithful. But what we tend to do is, is we tend to, when we, see, when we use the word faithful, we tend to put it in terms like that that we can see. You know? Guys, you can't do that with God. God is not some puppy that licks you and loves you and is there all the time. But that's what we think about God. We either try to make God some, some genie in the sky or some granddaddy that's going to be there bringing you a piece of candy every time you need it or a puppy or something like that. Guys, God is God. He is unchangeable. He is true to his word. He is faithful. And then also that faithfulness we talked about is also used in the Old Testament and the New Testament to, to describe that quality of that relationship in the Old Testament, but, well, actually both between Israel and the Christians um, and that relationship that God calls for you and I to have with each other and with him. God is faithful. He can never change. He's immutable. That's the fancy word for can't change. Okay? And he is faithful. He can't lie. He can't break a promise. Okay? And we are supposed to be faithful to him and trust him even when we don't. We, it, you know, there's a great, great quote that says, um, when I can't see his hand, I have to trust his heart. Guys, most of my life I've spent traveling not being able to see God's hand, but I have to trust his heart. Okay? So we need to be faithful to God. So God is faithful. Let's just, and there's so many scriptures. That was just so, several of them. They're just, I, I looked it up in my, my software stuff, and there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of scriptures. But I just picked out a few here today to talk about. So we're going to be hitting scripture left and right. That's kind of, we're going to be just digging into the truth today, the truth of God's word. Uh, look at Deuteronomy 32, verses 3 and 4. I'm reading from the New Living here. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. How gracious is our God. He is the rock. His deeds are perfect. Everything he does is just and fair. I'm going to throw this in. Even when we don't understand it. Okay? That's faith. Trust him when you don't understand it. Okay? He is a faithful, say faithful. He is a faithful God who does no wrong how just and upright he is. It, it, verse 4 describes God as a rock. A rock. Okay? He's perfect. He's faithful and just. Here's the thing. Nothing God has ever promised has ever failed. Get that in your head. Nothing he has ever promised has ever failed. All right? All, everything he does is perfect, wise, and righteous. Again, God, it, it's not when we understand it. It is, period. We need to walk in it. Okay? 
We don't have to understand it. We just have to trust it. I don't understand how them lights come on when I turn that thing on. I just flip the switch and trust it's going to come on. You know? I couldn't tell you how my car cranks up. Daryl Kenny can, some of you others, but I can't. I know I only put the key in there, and I'm just trusting it's going to crank up when I do. Okay? I don't have to understand it. I just have to use it and apply what I've got. Okay? God is a God of truth. He's constant to his promises. He does not, and I'm going to keep saying this and keep saying this, God cannot break his promises. So quit accusing God of unfaithfulness. When things don't turn out the way you want, you start blaming God for it. And I'm going to tell you, stop it. God is faithful. We are human. Trust that God knows way better than you. When you don't, yeah. I'll keep going. Just quit blaming everything on God. He's big enough to handle it. He's like, he's like, come on, take another shot. I'm God. I can handle this. But don't you think sometimes He just says, "Boy, I just wish they'd get it." You know, I just wish they'd get it. Now, let's go on to the next verse, Lamentations. Look at this, verse uh, 3, 22, and 3 and 3. And, and you saw this one up there. The faithful, say faithful. Amen. Love of the Lord never ends. Is it going to stop? No, never ends. Like that movie, Never Ending Story. Remember that? I watched it when it first came out, and I'm still watching it now. He's right, it does never end. <laughs> it just keeps going and going. Uh, his... His, the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is His faithfulness. Say faithfulness. His mercies are new every morning. God, God pours new mercies on you every single morning. He gives you everything you need to make it through the day. You already have, you already have for lack of a better term, you already got them bullets in the clip. Just pull the trigger. Lamentations. <laughs> Just the name of that book kind of gives me worms. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I mean, you know, like Lamentations. That sounds like the skin disease or something. Uh, or it sounds like, you know, lament. Like, oh, woe is me. Like, like on the hee-haw. I'm, I'm showing my age here today. A lot of you people don't even know what hee-haw is or was. Could care less. <laughs> But on Hee Haw, there used to be two guys say, doom, despair, agony. That's Lamentations. I mean, they were singing Lamentations. And Lamentations is a book like that. Lamentations is full of all that kind of stuff. But the amazing thing is that in the midst, Je Jeremiah wrote Lamentations. And in the midst of all that doom, despair, and agony, Jeremiah hung on to God's faithfulness. Guys, listen. God doesn't promise to make you comfortable. He says, I'm going to be there when everything gets uncomfortable. And so what are we going to do? Are we going to say, God, why would you put me here? And he's saying, I didn't put you there. That's your choice. You ended up there by choice. But I'm still here with you. Amen. Let's start living in that, folks. Let's, quit. let's just quit listening to this mess on Sunday morning. And let's start living it. How about it? Let's put it to practice. Put it to practice. Jeremiah, listen, Jeremiah knew from personal experience about God's faithfulness. One of my favorite passages in Jeremiah, y'all, Jeremiah, when God called Jeremiah, he said, uh, he said, Jeremiah, he called him as a youngin. Probably, I don't know, I don't know how it was. But he called him as a young, he said, Jeremiah, you're going to be a pillar of iron, buddy. You're going to go up and meet kings and queens. You're going to say stuff to them and you just do whatever I tell you and it's all going to be good. And Jeremiah says, sign me up. So he does that for about 20 chapters in Jeremiah. He's like blowing and going. Blah, 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 blah. He's just spouting off all this stuff. And then he runs into this priest called Pasher. Now notice it was a priest that didn't like what the truth was all about. One of the church boys didn't like really hearing the truth. And a priest named Pasher came along and he says, Jeremiah, I'm tired of you running your mouth about God. He says, so what we're going to do, we're going to strip you buck naked, put you in stocks in the middle of the city square, and we're going to beat the daylights out of you. Now I can just picture, Jer well, I don't even want to picture Jeremiah buck naked, but anyway, I can picture him in the stocks, stripped naked, getting the daylights beat out of him, and all the time in his head he's saying, 
I'm a pillar of iron, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, God, is this what you, is this a pillar of iron? Thank you very much, God. Yeah, remind me, uh huh, yeah, you sold me a bill of goods. And then one of the most authentic, true statements in the whole Bible comes out right there. Jeremiah says, God, you tricked me and I fell for it. And then he says, but what would I do? If I shut up, your words will burn like, <coughs> burn like fire in my bones. Because I know that even in the midst of these trials, you are faithful. Guys, when you feel like you're stripped naked, getting the daylights beat out of you, and nobody cares about you at all, God cares about you, and He is faithful. He has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. But here's the thing that, that Jeremiah learned in all this. God promised now the children of Israel that punishment was going to come for their disobedience. And guess what? He can't break his promises, so the punishment came. So, here's the thing. Jeremiah learned, and he, he said, okay, God promised that God was going to restore the future and the blessing to the children of Israel. And because, here, here's what we need to remember. Because Jeremiah lived through the hard times, and that was a promise of God. He trusted in the promise of God for the upcoming good times. So that's a lesson to us. When life gets tough, trust in the promises of God, the restoring promises of God. Okay? Listen, trust in God. Tr we, we need to trust in God's faithfulness on a moment by moment, day by day thing. And what that does is that makes us confident in all the promises of the future. Okay? Let's go on to Isaiah. Look at Isaiah 49, 7. The Lord, the Redeemer, and the Holy One of Israel says to the one who is despised and rejected by the nations, to the one who is the servant of the rulers, kings will stand at attention when you pass. Princes will also bow low because of the Lord, the faithful one. Say faithful. The Holy One of Israel has chosen you because the Lord, the faithful one, it's because God, the faithful one, is faithful in fulfilling all his promises that we know stuff's going to happen. God is faithful in that. Okay, now, trust me. Here, I don't think you can say, hey, God promised me a 2016 Mercedes. You might can. But I think God, you know, and so you might be all mad at God when he didn't, you know, you didn't wake up next morning that Mercedes wasn't sitting in your yard. Okay. God's promises are about your uh, spiritual benefit and the advancement of his kingdom, not about your personal comfort. Okay. Let's stop thinking that we signed up for this thing because God's going to make us comfortable. Okay. You look at Jesus, I don't think he was very comfortable when he's having the skin tore off his back. Okay? So, <clears throat> here's the thing. God is a covenant God. All right? Covenant means more than a promise. Covenant is like, a, is, is like an unbreakable promise forever. Okay? For eternity. God is a covenant God. And we can trace all of the certainty of all of these promises to the fact that God is a covenant God and he is faithful to his covenant. He's a covenant-keeping God. Now let's keep going here just a second. Look at 2 Timothy 2.13. This is exciting to me because this is where I live. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful. I'm going to say that again. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful because he cannot deny who he is. Paul was trying to tell Timothy, this young preacher boy, the teenage preacher boy, to, <clears throat> to be faithful in his devotion and service to God and, and to, to hang in there. And he was trying to say, look, even when, even when you can't make it, God can. Even when, even when you're totally out of faith, God never runs out of faith. When you've thrown in the towel, God has a brand new one for you every morning. Okay? Look at this uh, quote by F.B. Meyer. Three things are impossible with God. To die, to lie, and to fail the soul that trusts Him. Listen, even, it goes on to say, even when we cannot muster faith enough, 
His word of promise cannot be frustrated. Jesus is faithful. God is faithful. Even when we don't have the faith that we need. Okay? Whole nother story here in a whole nother sermon is that the crazy thing is that God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, gives us the faith that we need to be faithful. So you don't have to muster it up. You don't have to work for it. God gives it to you. You just hit the button and go. Okay? So here's the thing. We may be, I have been, faithless at a lot of times. You know? I remember one time we lived in Leslie. I remember standing at the kitchen windows washing dishes and I was so angry and, and life had totally fallen apart. And I specifically remember shaking my fist and looking out the window at God saying, God, where are you? Where are you? I was totally faithless. But the great thing is that God was working behind the scenes because he's always faithful. He is always faithful. And Jesus, Jesus said, look, Jesus is faithful. He said, look, I'm going to be with you to the end of the age. That means forever and ever, amen. Jesus is going to be there. He's never going to bail on us. Okay? God's faithfulness, listen, listen. God's faithfulness is constant. God's faithfulness is not negated by our unfaithfulness. Okay? I found a great quote. It said, our future does not hang on the strength of our faith, but on the strength of God's faithfulness. Trust me, you ain't got enough faith. I ain't got enough faith to make it. But God's faithfulness is the thing that provides for us and the thing that draws us and the thing that keeps us going. Look at Hebrews 3, 6. But Christ was faithful. Say faithful. As a son over his household. And we are, that, we are that household if we hold on to the courage and the confidence of our hope. And listen, and he's talking about Moses here in the, in the back story of this thing. And God, God had required faithfulness from Moses, a great leader, and he required faithfulness from Jesus. Do you realize that even Jesus had to have faith and to be faithful? Even though he was God, he did. But the thing is, and this is very obvious as you're going to read Hebrews, that Jesus is superior to Moses just like a son is superior to a servant, okay? And while both were, were called and appointed to be faithful, think about this. Moses was called to be faithful as a servant. Jesus was called to be faithful as a son, okay? And it, it just boils down to this. Moses served, Jesus rules, okay? That's the way that comes out. So we are that household of faith he's talking about there. So all of God's people in his household, brothers and sisters in Christ, guys, we should remain faithful. And that's one of the hardest things to do because all we want to do is just quit. When stuff gets going hard, we just quit. And God says, I ain't ever going to quit. I'm going to be here for you. I'm faithful. Christ, listen, Christ, the, the power, the spirit, the very living spirit of Jesus Christ lives in us as believers. Okay? And that's the thing that's going to help you remain faithful. Some of you say, well, Scott, I don't, know how to, I don't know how to stay faithful when my life's falling apart. I know you don't, but the Holy Spirit does in you. You claim that, walk in that word, and stand faithful. God knows you don't know how to do it. That's why he gave the Holy Spirit to us. He's going to help us stay faithful and courageous and even maybe more importantly, hopeful to the very end. Now, I know we're not, we're not saved by being firm and steadfast in our faith. You know, that's not it. But our courage and our hope and our, our steadfastness do show that our faith is real. You know, if you want to bail every time something wrong happens, I just have to question, is your faith real? Do you really understand the God and the truths that we're talking about here? Okay. So if you don't have that long-term faithfulness, guys, 
you're going to be blown away every time something happens. Every time you stump your toe, you're going to blame it on God. You know, every time you, the, wind, the temptation is going to swirl up around you, you're going to listen to the wrong stuff. You, everything. Okay? Faithfulness is the thing that's going to support you through every issue. God's faithfulness and the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Now, the next few verses here come out of Revelation. And this is all about God being faithful. Okay, look at Revelation 19, 11. Then I saw heaven open, and there was a white horse. Its rider was called Faithful. Say Faithful. faithful. And true. He judges and makes war in righteousness. Th this verse obviously talks about the second coming of Jesus. That, that thing that we're all as believers looking for. Okay? Guys, listen. Jesus' return is going to be unmistakable. Okay? You ain't going to miss it. It's going to be a big deal. You ain't going to have to look at the internet. You ain't going to have to turn on CNN. You're going to see it. Okay? You're going to see it. And heaven is going to be standing open. And there's going to be a rider on that white horse. And that rider is Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. And he's going to make his entrance. And it's going to be a whole lot bigger than Beyonce making her entrance at the Super Bowl. I guarantee you. This rider is called faithful and true. And here's the thing I want you to think about. Even though this is talking about that Jesus is called faithful and true, the Word of God, the King of kings and Lord of lords. What this means is that, guys, no name can do Jesus justice. He, Jesus, is, Jesus is so much bigger than any description or word we can put on him or name we can put on him. He is so much bigger than that. So if God is faithful and he, he and his, his trinity are faithful, then faithfulness should be a characteristic of God's people. Okay? A faithful, listen, a faithful God keeps his covenant and a faithful people keep his commandments. Okay, that's our responsibility as faithful people. All right? Look at Matthew 25, 21. Uh, story of the... Of the uh, uh, faithful servant, so to speak. Okay. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful over a few things. I'll put you in charge over many things. Share your master's joy. Guys, this guy's reward for being faithful was, get, was being given more and more responsibility. Okay. Greater responsibility. We're going to give an account of our faithfulness. We are. Okay. Jesus is coming back. So how... You, you know, how are you, how are you going to respond when you're given an account for your time, your talents, your energies, all that stuff? How are you going to respond to that? Okay? Jesus is saying, be faithful with what I gave you and use it for the glory of God. Okay? Be faithful with what I've given you. So that's one thing that we as as children of God should do. Second thing, uh, Revelation 2.10. Don't be afraid of what you're about to suffer. Look, the devil is about to throw some of you in prison to test you, and you will have affliction for ten days. Be faithful, say faithful, faithful, until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Now, that don't sound like a whole exciting thing to me there, getting thrown in prison and being faithful to death. Okay? But God says, hey, it's okay. You hang in there, and you're going to get the crown of life. Now, who he's talking about here in this, in this chapter in Revelation was the church at Smyrna, okay? And he, he's telling them to, to stay faithful even when they're facing death. They're facing persecution. And we don't need to fear death because we're going to be given the crown of life. In Smyrna, uh, there was, they were famous for their athletic games, all right? And the winner of these games, every champion got a crown, a victory wreath. And that's exactly what he's talking about here. And he's saying, um, you know, you're going to get that crown that everybody in Smyrna is so dying to get. Okay? You're, but your crown's not going to be something that the emperor puts on you. Your crown is something that the king of kings, lord of lords, god of all puts on you. Okay? And so... Uh, it's the crown of life. And so he says, be faithful. Hang in there. Be faithful. Even though things are happening, be faithful. Revelation 14, 12. This demands the perseverance or the faithfulness of the saints who keep God's commands and their faith in Jesus. So keeping God's commands. 
Okay, and it's going to take it's going to take sticking with it. It's going to take perseverance. It's going to take guts because your faith is going to be challenged. Some of you are saying, well, you know, you're, you're talking about my faith being challenged from out there. No, I'm talking about your faith being challenged by Satan when you sit in your room by yourself. All the things you're going through, your faith's being challenged, and Satan's laughing all the way to the bank. And he says, you need to keep God's commands. Trust in my faithfulness, God says. All right? Trust in my faithfulness. Now, is that, order, that just the whole deal that, that God cannot lie and God's promises? Here's the thing. Some of us don't know God's word enough to know the promises. You just can't carry a Bible around your back pocket and say, God, I trust these promises. What you got to do is you got to claim those promises. Isaiah 49, 25 says, uh, The captives of the mighty men will be set free. I will contend with those who contend with you. Um, the strongholds of the mighty men will be broken down, and I will save your children, says the Lord. Guys, that is my, that, I have prayed that prayer for the past, I don't know how many years, over my children. I pray it today over my grandchildren. Every day I pray that prayer because God is faithful to save my children and my grandchildren. I can't just hold up the book and go, God, I know you're going to save my babies. I got to claim that promise. I got to speak that promise. I got to stand in that promise. I got to walk in that promise. I got to get that promise out of my head into my heart. I got to trust that promise. So get the book off the shelf, get it in your heart, and let's see what difference it makes. Revelation 17, 14. These will make war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will conquer them because He is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Mm. Those with Him uh, are called chosen, are called chosen and faithful. Listen, when Jesus comes back, His cho when it comes to that final victory over Satan, you know, guess who's going to be with Him? Believers. Okay? His chosen and faithful people will be with him. Call means invited. You know, we've been called to the purpose to be a part of God's kingdom. Chosen means that God has, has found favor on us and he has drawn us to himself. We have been drawn to God. Scripture says nobody comes to me unless the Father draw you. Okay? Salvation is open to anyone. I want you to hear that. Salvation is open to anyone and everyone. And God draws you, okay? Faithful, the last thing. Those who showed themselves trustworthy and dependable and loyal. That's the, the meaning, the biblical meaning of faith, okay? Now, so here's the, here's the kind of the take home for us. If faithfulness is, is a characteristic of God and of Jesus, and, and faithfulness should be a characteristic of God's people, then faithfulness should be a characteristic, let's get it right here, of Outbreak Church. Okay, so what does this look like for Outbreak Church? Let me just throw out a couple of things for you. Look at Mark 9, 50. Salt is good, but if salt would lose its flavor, how can you make it salty? Have salt among yourselves and be at peace with one another. Jesus used salt to talk about three different qualities, I think, about this faithfulness to be found in his people. And he, he pulls it. He's just such a master of words there. Okay, so... First thing we need to remember from that verse is that we should remember God's faithfulness. Okay? We should remember God's faithfulness. And look at, uh, look at Leviticus 2.13. It says, season all your grain offerings with salt. In other words, put salt on all your grain offerings to remind you of God's eternal covenant. Never forget to add salt to your grain offerings. Okay? That says, remember God's faithfulness. Okay? Remember God's faithfulness with the salt. And we're going to keep going on this thing. So, not only should we remember God's faithfulness with the salt, we have to make a difference in the flavor of the world we live in. 
Okay? Matthew 5, 13. You are the salt of the earth. But what good has salt uh, if it's lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It should be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. Cindy and I were having uh, dinner last night with Ron and Sandy uh, Hetrick and had an awesome dinner. And I reached for the salt shaker and I put salt all over my, my dinner. Okay? It made it nice and flavorful. Okay? How dumb would it be for me to sit there and, and leave the salt shaker sitting over there and go, Mmm, I sure wish I had some salt on my food. Mmm, I wish I had some salt on my food. Mmm, that salt looks good. I wish I had some salt on my food. That's what most of us do every day spiritually. God says, pick it up and shake it, Bo. The salt's in there. Just get it out of the shaker. Too many times we try to live our life like, oh, I'm just the shaker. No, you're the salt. And as long as you're stuck inside the shaker, you ain't doing nobody a bit of good. So get out of your shaker. Ask God to shake the shaker. We flavor the world. Just, just like that salt flavored that incredible steak I had last night. Wow, that thing was good. <laughs> Let me just think about that a minute. Wow. Um, we, we are to flavor the world. We are to flavor the world. And then here's another part we're supposed to do. Being salt... And being faithful, we're supposed to counteract all the moral decay in that's going on all around us. And any of you ever remember, like, like how you make um, country ham? You just pack it in salt. You know? You don't have to do nothing to it. You just pack it in salt and leave it there. The salt is what keeps the decay from getting to the meat of the ham. But it sure makes it good on a biscuit in the morning. I ain't playing. I mean, we're going to tear it up. I'm, I'm, I don't know where we're going to eat, but we're going to eat. Mm -hmm. We're going to tear it up in a minute. See, that's who we are, guys. We are the salt of the earth. And that doesn't mean we stay inside the shaker. That means that we, that we flavor the earth. Now, have you ever met somebody who didn't like salt? Yeah, I have. I don't do salt. Well, that's okay. You're going to meet people that don't want your flavor. And they're going to they find your flavor repulsive. Because Scripture says that the Word of God, the cross, is foolishness to those who don't believe. So don't run away and hide. <laughs> just say, thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to meet that person. And you just keep loving on that person. And eventually they might want to open your shaker a little bit. They might want a little bit of that salt on you. Okay? So just like it, just like it keeps salt, uh, food from, from decaying and, and, and pack stuff in salt, um, when we, listen, when we lose our saltiness, when we, when we lose our desire to salt the earth with the love and the message and the faithfulness of God, guys, we become useless to Him. When we lose that, listen, we talk about being contagious and we talk about being infected. When you lose your flavor, you've become cured. Now, that's a good thing in physical medicine, but that's a bad thing in spiritual medicine. I don't ever want to be cured of the gospel virus. I don't want no shot that's going to take the gospel virus out of me. I want to stay as contagious as I can. And when you lose your saltiness, it's just like you're cured. Okay, I'm not, I'm not contagious anymore. Yay! I don't want to go through life not being contagious anymore. I want to be so doggone contagious. If I blink at somebody, Jesus jumps on them. And I want to be close enough to them to get that done. You can't do that. Oh, God bless them. You got to get right up in there, folks. We think we're going we think we're going to infect somebody from 100 yards off. Ain't going to happen. You've got to be in their life. You've got to be doing life with them. 
Again, Matthew 5, 13 says, you are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it's lost its flavor? He just says, you, we are the salt. And then he turns right back around and says, but what good are you if you lose your flavor? Guys, if we're infected, if we are faithful people at Outbreak Church, serving a faithful Savior and a faithful God, nothing is going to stop. The, the gates of hell will not prevail against us. So if we're infected with that gospel virus, in other words, if, if we're the walking salt, that Jesus calls us to be. Guys, it's going to be making a difference in our neighborhoods, in our families, in our communities, in our city, in our country, in our world, everywhere. So shake the salt. Ask God, say, God, pick me up and shake me on people. Let me flavor their world let me hold back the decay that's creeping in. Let me be a part of your kingdom. Let me be a part of, of infecting somebody with that. Because the, here's the deal. Just like that scripture says, God is faithful and true. His mercies are true every morning. And they're new every morning. Stephen Curse Chapman wrote a song back in the, in the 80s, early 80s, called My Redeemer is Faithful and True. You know, he wrote that song before he had any children. He wrote that song when he was a young man. And I heard him say a few days ago, somebody asked him, Stephen, I mean, if you know who Stephen Curse Chapman is, he's like a prolific songwriter and, and Christian songwriter. Just huge, huge, I mean hundreds and probably even thousands of songs. Somebody said, if you had written just one song, I mean, you think about all the songs he's written, The Great Adventure, It's My Turn, all those amazing songs. If you, if you could have just written one song, and the song that means the most to you, what would it be? Now, between the time Stephen Curse Chapman wrote that song and he was asked this question, guys, he's had to live through some stuff. You may not know the story, but one of his young sons, uh, just new driver, backed over his baby daughter and killed her. You think about a daddy who's having to, to deal with all of that and to deal with a son who felt such guilt and then the daddy who was trying to figure out why, why God would allow his baby daughter who just was just crawling to be run over by a car. God, where are you in all this? Why in all this? So between the time he wrote that song and the time he was asked this question, all of that happened. So I say that to say that he didn't just write a song. He lived his song. And he heard his song in his heart. And that was what held him together. And when he answered the question, he said, if I could just have one song, it would be, my Redeemer is faithful and true. Guys, I don't know what's going through in your life. I don't know what's happening in your life. All I know is that our Redeemer is faithful and true.
faithful and true My Redeemer is faithful and true Everything He has said He will do And every morning His mercies are new My Redeemer is faithful and true My heart rejoices when I read the promise There's a place I'm preparing for you And I know someday I'll see my Lord face to face My Redeemer is faithful and true my Redeemer is faithful and true Everything He has said He will do And every morning His mercies are new My Redeemer is faithful and true and in every situation He proved His love for me When I lack the understanding He gives more grace to me My Redeemer is faithful and true Everything He has said He will do Every morning His mercies are new My Redeemer is faithful and true My Redeemer is faithful and true God, you are faithful. You are true. God, you are spectacular. God, we just trust you. God, God, show us how to trust you more. Show us how to trust you. God, we want to be faithful people because you're a faithful God. God, show us your promises cannot be backed out on. Show us, God, the power of your faith. God, teach us to be faithful people because you are a faithful God. Not so people look at us and say, oh, look how much faith they have. So people will look at you and say, my, what a faithful God. Teach us, God. Teach us right now in the quietness of this time. God, great is your faithfulness. God, you are so holy and you're so righteous. change us from the inside out. God, show us how to not just read your word, but apply your word and live in your word. Show us how to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. God, transform us. Renew our minds. And let us walk and trust in your faithfulness every day. Wow. God's mighty good, isn't he? God's mighty good, isn't he? Thanks for being here today. Moms, bless you. Bless you, bless you. If you want to help us out at the school on Thursday and Friday of this week, um, if you could be there about 1015 or 1030, that would be awesome. And uh, uh, Mount Holly Elementary School is on uh, Porter Road. So you just... Uh, Get on Porter Road and head out, and you, you can't miss it. You'll be on your right out there. We'd love to see you. Guys, walk in God's faithfulness. Trust God's faithfulness. Let it make a difference in your life. Be blessed. Have a good week. <laughs>